In this gospel, we work with our hands and we make money to take care of ourselves as pastors. We don't depend on church, money, and people. So that we can look at your face and tell you anything. If you don't like, that is the door. Get out. Period. Glory. Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, wherever you are watching us from. This is new creation in Christ in reality. We bring you things that enlighten your spirit, things that edify you, and things that put you on the right track to know who you are and what Christ has done in you. You know, most people think that as a disciple or as a follower of Dr. Ebed Amina, that, that we are not learning anything from him, but rather we are learning how to be criticizing people. And I have made it clearly to people that we are not criticizing people, but rather we are putting the record straight. And people thought that Dr. Ebed Amina is not raising any pastor that, that will be able to teach what he is teaching tomorrow. That is what most people think or thought or have in their mind. But I would just want to just come to clear their, clear their doubt. There are many of them that is following him. And we are doing, an hour, and we, and we are doing our, our work underground. We are doing the underground, which is the primary assignment. Dr. Ebed Amina is not raising pastors that will come tomorrow and be competing on how they will be bigger than each other. No. Our priority, our main purpose in ministry is souls, is raising souls. And that is what we are doing. That is what we are doing. Dr. Ebe Damina is not raising disciples that will come tomorrow that they will be competing who has the biggest congregation or who has the biggest or who rides the biggest car. No. Our main purpose and our main assignment in, on this earth is to raise men is to raise men to, to know how to pastor themselves and others. And that is the principle that we are going with. So I want you to watch this video. Please, as you watch this video, please also like, share for others to be blessed. Thank you. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel at New Creation in Christ Reality. We are here to serve you and to bless your mind. Remain blessed. Thank you. For Abel Damina. Yeah, very soon you will get back to preaching what they are preaching. Because in this gospel, we work with our hands. And we make money to take care of ourselves as pastors. We don't depend on church, money, and people. So that we can look at your face and tell you anything. If you don't like, that is the door. Get out. Period. But for you, ministry is you collect from people. You do prophecy. You can't preach this message. Let me tell you now before we start. Let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Gabriel. And I'm your in-law. Praise God. Hmm. Praise God. So, in the gospel is a fact of the message. And that fact of the message is the only message. Pay attention. We don't have messages. We have only one message. God has sent me to make my people rich. It's a lie. There is no such man sent by God like that. You heard yourself, not God. Because Christianity is apostolic. And historic. Peter didn't preach another message from Paul. Peter preached Christ. Paul preached Christ. Thomas preached Christ. Bartholomew preached Christ. All of them preached Christ. Apollos preached Christ. So God cannot give you a message that is not in the Bible. He has sent me. My own is healing. My own is deliverance. It does not exist in the Bible. If we start really preaching the Bible, some people, their ministry, they will find that they have no ministry. Peter, your own is holiness and salvation. Paul, your own is the mystery of the new creation. Thomas, because you doubt too much, your own is, you have to come up, divine wisdom. Philip, you are slow-minded. Let's give you potentials. No, not portals yet. Then you look for the one that is spiritual. People like 
James and John, the sons of thunders. Your own is portals and dimension and realms. Can't you see how confused over years the body of Christ has become? Somebody said that church is like a market where some are selling spare parts. Some, are, God forbid. What a shame. That's why people are tired of Christianity. They want to join traditional religion. The Gen Z's will not listen to you. You deceive their parents. You can't deceive Gen Z. They want to have a reason for what they believe. You talk to Gen Z, they will tell you why, daddy, why, how, why. They will be asking you a question. Then the worst one is Generation Alpha. Who are operating computer from their mother's womb. And you are preaching foundational deliverance. They don't understand what you are talking about. They can't relate with it. And you are losing them fast, fast, fast. To atheism. To all kinds of new age religion. And you are there claiming you are, you are bishop and you are daddy G.O. You have lost them already. Until one Dr. Ebed Amina came on the scene. And began to interpret and expound scriptures. And people began to pick interest and said, they may not understand, but the spirit of God in them start bearing witness. This man is correct. This man is correct. That is the truth. There is a shift already. A new day is here already. And in this beginning, the shift is on right now. Campuses are going to break out everywhere. For some of you, your heart desire is being answered by this conference. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, we have that message preach. I once told somebody, I said, the person who said that God has called him to make the people, is, uh, come and make people rich, he's the only one that is rich. Because he's the only one that appeared in Forbes magazine almost every year among the richest pastors in Africa. Their names appear. And no one of their church member name has appeared. Only their name is appearing. So, actually, God asked you to come and make yourself rich, not to make the people rich. When you are collecting from everybody, are you not going to be rich? They thought Abed Amina is serious. They never see trouble. Some of us are coming. And some of you are here. They never see trouble. They never see trouble. Trouble will come for them in a bereketatious manner. Plenty, plenty of trouble. Good trouble for the restoration of the dignity of Christ. God has been misrepresented. His character has been assassinated. Now we have to restore dignity back to the gospel. And the new day is here. Praise God. But you will find out in the closing teaching I made yesterday that when a man is saved, that man already is saved by the spirit of God. The spirit of God is the agency for salvation. It's the spirit of regeneration. And from the day he comes in, he stays in. And when he comes in, he comes in with all the gifts of the spirit. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discernment of spirit, tongues, interpretation, prophecy, miracles, healing, supernatural faith. He comes with all of it inside the believer. So when you minister the gospel to somebody and the person gets born again, receives the life of Christ because a sinner cannot give his life to Christ. Because what he has is not life. What he has is spiritual death. You can offer death and call it life. That's why I say, but I am come that you might have. What you have before is not the life. It's my coming that brings you life. So what you have had before I came is not life. So it's spiritual death. But receiving me is life coming into you. It's called eternal life. All right? So that's why you can't say, I gave my life. Which life did you have to give? You had no life. Rather, I receive the life of Christ. I receive Christ. Then I came alive. Glory to God. Glory to God. So inside him is the ability to speak with tongues. Because new creation, new man, 
new tongues. So when I'm ministering to you the gift of uh, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I am to point you to what you already have. Nothing is coming from heaven. It's already in you because the Spirit of God moved into you in the person of the Holy Ghost. And as the Holy Ghost was coming in, it came with all the gifts of the Spirit. Self-contained, follow, come. And as he moved into you, he's a resident on your inside. Awaiting when someone will pastor and teach you on how to take off and take from and speak forth as utterance. That is your launching into explosive practical ministry. And it is called the anointing upon or the spirit upon. The spirit within got you born again, Holy Ghost, and sat inside you. Waiting for your baptism of the spirit upon. So that one is for utterance, ministry, power, demonstration, doing the work of the ministry. That is the one Jesus asked his disciples to wait until they wear something. So under the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we are told in Acts, you are to wear something. And do has the language, it implies a wearing of something. That means you wore the spirit within has enveloped you about so that you can do ministry. Pay attention. That's why you must not take speaking in tongues lightly. 